Welcome. This is Mr. Gee with a video that um, covers the material that we're going over in my algebra class. We've already covered uh, simplifying monomials with just positive exponents. Now we're covering uh, the idea of simplifying monomials and learning how to deal with negative exponents. So the directions read simplify the following monomial expressions. Be sure to write all negative exponents as positive by moving its base to the opposite side of the division bar. So there's a spelling error that I have to fix there. Please show the expansion of like bases when we're using the power rule, the addition of exponents when we're multi using multiplication, or the cancellation of exponents when we're using division. So the first problem that we'll do is problem number one. So let me go ahead and zoom in so we can get a good picture. And a couple of things to remember is how negative exponents work. If I have x to the negative 2, one thing to remember is there's always a numerator in a problem, and there's always a denominator. In this case, we see the numerator. There's nothing in the denominator, but there is always at least a 1. And what we learned about last week is if it's if a base is in the numerator and it has a negative exponent, to write that base in the positive, or the exponent is a positive, you move the base to the denominator, and then the exponent becomes positive. So on the other hand, if I have a base in the denominator and it is a negative exponent to make it positive, I move it to the numerator and then the exponent to the base becomes positive. All the other rules that we learned in the last worksheet still apply. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this problem. I've got 6 to the negative 2, 4 to the square, x to the square, y to the negative 3, and then everything's raised to the third power. Now remember, everything has a denominator of 1. We can see that uh, 6 to the negative 2 needs to be moved to the denominator. So the base moves to the denominator and its exponent becomes positive. 4 squared is already positive, so it stays in the numerator. x squared has a positive exponent, it stays in the numerator. Now the base of y to the negative 3 is a negative exponent, so the y moves to, to the denominator and it becomes positive. The exponent still stays there. We don't change it at all. And now we've got a problem like we've had before uh, that goes along with the last worksheet. Now we just simplify the inside and then we'll apply the power rule. So now this becomes our base. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. And then I have x squared. And then I have 1 over y to the third. You really don't need to break those apart. What I'm trying to figure out is what this will simplify to. I know 4 divides the top and 4 divides the bottom. So that should be 4x squared. 4 divides 36, 9 times y to the third. And now I'm ready to apply the power. This is the base. This tells me how many times the base is multiplied together. So I will have 4 times 4 times 4. Then x squared times x squared times x squared divided by 9 times 9 times 9 times y to the third times y to the third times y to the third. You may need a calculator to help you here. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. 
x squared. We add the exponents there. There's 2, 4, 6, so that's x to the 6th. And then y to the 3rd. Multiplied together 3 times is 3, 6 is y to the 9th. So that is our final answer for number 1. Our next problem now is number four. So you can see that we've got to rewrite each one of these. Let me pull me up a, let's drop me a new layer here. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. Three has a one there, so it stays where it's at. It's a base with a positive one, a to the negative two. The base will move to the denominator, and then the power changes to a positive. b to the third already has a positive exponent, so it stays where it's at. c to the negative 2, the base of c moves to the denominator, and then the power becomes positive. And then all that is again raised to the third power. So the way, the way that we want to do this is to kind of split these problems in two and simplify the first one and simplify the second one and then we'll multiply everything together. Now everything's multiplied together three times. So three times three times three and then b to the third times b to the third times b to the third. division bar then a squared times a squared times a squared then c squared c squared times c squared now our final answer is 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 27 b 3 plus 3 is 6 6 plus 3 is 9 that should be a b it looks like a 6 b to the ninth and then a to the sixth and c to the sixth now that's not the entire problem it's just part of it right we've got this other side over here to do okay now let's simplify this side now there's no exponent there so we're okay so uh, 54 to the negative 1 54 will move in the to the denominator a to the fourth, that base has a positive exponent. It stays where it's at. B to the negative sixth, B moves to the denominator with a, a positive six exponent. C is to the third is already positive, so it stays where it's at. Now I'll take these two and multiply them together. These problems are quite lengthy to do. You just have to take really small steps so you don't get lost. Okay, let's look at our numbers first. I have 27 divided by 54. I've got a to the fourth over a to the sixth, b to the ninth, divided by b to the sixth and then I have c to the third divided by c to the sixth now um, you can see that a to the fourth can will be on top and then I can write a to the sixth is a to the fourth times a to the second so you can see the a's cancel a to the fourth cancel b to the ninth can be written as b to the sixth times b to the third you can see that b to the sixth will cancel and then on the last one we can see that c to the third c to the sixth can be written as c to the third times c to the third so the c to the thirds cancel and 27 over 54, that simplifies to 1 half. 
So my final answer will be, oh, I find me some room here, it will equal, let me write me a division bar here, one half a squared, you can see the a survives on the bottom, b to the third survives on the top, and then c to the third is in the denominator. And if you want to leave that one there, you can. I'm going to go ahead and erase it. So that is our final answer for number four. I want to draw a square around it so I know where to find it. So some things to remember is simplify the inside as far as you can, then apply the power. Simplify the inside as far as you can, apply the power group uh, like bases together. I group the numbers together, group the A's together, group the B's together, group the C's together, and then went ahead and rewrote what I could to get a, a cancellation to one in the numerator and the denominator, and then I get my final answer. Our last problem is number 10. You can see that we still have a base raised to the base, uh, raised to a power. Uh, this base happens to be uh, have a that has already has a numerator and a denominator. Now, what will happen on this one if there's a negative num a negative exponent in the denominator? It will actually move up. If here we have a base of three with a negative two. That three to the negative two will move into the nom into the denominator so it's actually switching places. The best way to go about this problem again is just to simplify the inside all the way and once we simplify the inside all the way then we'll uh, apply the power. So th 3 to the negative 2 the 3 will move to the denominator and the power becomes positive. 15 to the negative first power, the 15 will move to the numerator, the power becomes positive. x to the negative 2, it moves to the denominator. x to the fifth is already positive, so it stays where it's at, so we'll end up with all our x's in the denominator. y to the third is positive, stays where it's at. X, uh, y to the negative 3 that y has a negative exponent, so the base moves to the numerator and the exponent changes sign. z to the first stays right where it's at, and z to the fourth stays where it's at. Now we're ready to simplify this. This will be 3 times 3. 15 is 3 times 5, so we can see that we'll have a cancellation of 1 there. Uh, I've got y to the 6th, y to the 3 times y to the 3. It's not an equals there. should be, uh, let's do our x's first. So 1, x to the 2nd times x to the 5th would be x to the 7th y to the third times y to the third would be y to the sixth and then z to the first I have z to the first and z to the fourth can be broken down to z to the first times z to the third we see that the z's cancel so now from there let's see what our answer becomes I have five y to the sixth. You can see the five survives on top, the y survives on top. Then I have three x to the seventh, z to the third. And that's my final answer for number ten. And really appreciate you tuning in. This is the last of the 
problems that we I plan to do for this video. If you have any questions, please post a comment on my YouTube site. If you'd like to subscribe to it, that would be great. And thank you for turning, tuning in and have a good afternoon.